So my name is Russell Foster. I've just been delighted and honoured to give the uh, Soriano Prize Lecture here at the World Congress of Neurology. The topic I tried to cover was on circadian rhythms. And just to sort of put them into context, we sit on a planet that revolves once every 24 hours. And this generates profound changes in both light and temperature and the availability of food. And in response to these profound environmental changes, most life on Earth has evolved an adaptive response. For us, it is the two profound states of both sleep and consciousness. And underpinning these profoundly different behaviours is a range of different physiological responses. So for example, our blood pressure changes over the 24-hour day, our core body temperature, the release of hormones. But essentially, over the 24-hour day, everything changes. And that has some very interesting um, clinical con uh, consequences. So for example, uh, the frequency of stroke. Uh, there's a 50% uh, increase in stroke frequency between 6 a.m. and 12 noon, and that corresponds almost precisely to the sharp circadian-driven rise in blood pressure. Uh, drugs have different effects across the 24-hour day. Radiotherapy, chemotherapy have all been shown to vary really very profoundly over the 24-hour day. So when considering interventions, therapeutic in interventions, it's becoming increasingly clear that time of day has a very important the other thing that's becoming clear is that sleep and circadian rhythm disruption has a big impact upon our overall health. Short-term sleep circadian disruption is associated with uh, the failure to process information accurately, uh, impulsivity, uh, the failure to, 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 to pick up the uh, signals from, from friends and colleagues so you reduce empathy, uh, and overall our brain power is simply impeded um, as a result of sleep loss. If we think of other groups of workers, such as night shift workers, where there may well have been night shift work over many years, we're seeing abnorm abnormal metabolic ab um, changes, such as diabetes 2 and obesity, uh, there are cardiovascular problems, and indeed in long-term night shift workers, such as long-term nurses, uh, there's a very important study from Denmark, Denmark showing that colorectal cancer and breast cancer are higher in night shift workers compared to day shift workers. The work I covered was really trying to um, explain how light is so critical in regulating our internal clock. We have buried at the base of our hypothalamus a paired structure called the suprachiasmatic nuclei. And this can be considered as the master biological clock. But it's no use unless it's set to the external world. The classic mismatch between internal time and the external world will be jet lag. We get over jet lag primarily as a result of exposure to the light-dark cycle. And a, and a bunch of what we've been trying to do over the past uh, 20 years, I suppose, has been to try and understand how the eye detects that light signal and regulates the clock and changes, in fact, the molecular clockwork. And what we discovered is that the visual cells of the eye, the rods and the cones, are not required for the detection of the light-dark cycle. But there's a third uh, receptor within the eye based upon the ganglion cells of the retina. The ganglion cells are those cells whose axons leave the eye and form the optic nerve. About one out of every hundred of those ganglion cells is directly light sensitive and they are the cells responsible for allowing us to uh, keep on time uh, to the external world. I then went on to discuss how these remarkable new cells are changing the patterns of gene expression in the clock and then also talking about how the sleep-wake cycle duration of sleep versus the duration of wake can also influ influence the molecular clockwork. And with this fundamental mechanistic insight, we've then been able to go on and understand how we might develop therapeutic interventions, specific drugs, that can fool the master clock in the brain, that it's seen light, um, and, 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 and essentially realign a, a disrupted circadian biology to the external world. This is particularly important in individuals who have no eyes. Their body clock is ticking, but it's drifting through time, and we want to give them back a sense of time. And as I say, use these drugs to fool the clock that it seems light. In addition to the profoundly blind, we know that in conditions such as schizophrenia and Alzheimer's and dementia, the clock is massively disrupted. 
And so what we might be able to do with these new drugs is stabilize sleep-wake and hopefully uh, improve the quality of life and the health uh, of both the individuals and their carers uh, with these uh, considerably debilitating conditions.